If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance declaring war on the New World Order. TruthRadioShow.com And welcome to the Dan Badan Show on TruthRadioShow.com. So we are now on to chapter 26 of the book of Matthew in our comprehensive study. So chapter 25 and 24 is amazing. Like where Jesus, where we left off is when Jesus told uh, the disciples, the, the prophecies of his coming. Then in chapter 25 there, when he's talking about the parables of how to obtain to get into the kingdom of heaven. You know what I mean? So uh, amazing studies. And now we're on to chapter 26. And guys, before we get going, guys, we've got a specific Bible study approach. We pray for wisdom and understanding. So we come before you, Jesus, Yeshua, Messiah, to please forgive us for our sins and trespasses. And we ask you, Heavenly Father, to install the Holy Spirit upon us once again, to give us insight and wisdom and understanding of your awesome divine word, and help us pull out all the information out of this context you want us to see today. And also, guys, amen as well. And also, guys, uh, we encourage you to read the scripture in context. We're not just going to read through it. We're going to study it. You know what I mean? <laughs> because it's not like a magazine or a novel. You just skim through whatever. No, you read through and you literally study each word in um, the, the scriptures and the context. Because context is key. And let the scripture interpret the scripture. Let the Holy Spirit work through you. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, awesome stuff. And uh, we just got done with chapter 25, so we are now on to chapter 26. It's a very long chapter, so we're going to try to get through this, um, not, you know, too fast, but, you know, in relative time. So uh, so now, it came to pass, when Jesus had finished all these sayings, and now remember the parables we talked about in the last chapter? The parables, how to obtain the kingdom of God, helping others and everything else. Yeah, you can help the homeless and help people that need help and go visit them, whatever the case, you're doing it for Jesus too, you know what I mean? So anyway, and it came to pass when Jesus had finished all these sayings, and he said unto his disciples, Ye know that after two days of the feast of, of Passover, the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. So I want to point one out thing out too, guys. The Passover, feast of the Passover. And I don't want to put, you know, because a lot of Christians out there, they do Christmas this time of year in December. And, um, you know, this is actually in the Easter time. So in this uh, in this time here with the Passover, it's usually where Christians, the modern-day Christians, celebrate Easter. Easter is not a biblical holiday, guys. The Passover is. It's not just for the Jews. Jesus, if you don't know not by now, I mean, Jesus himself kept the feast of the Passover. He didn't abolish it. There's nothing in the scripture at all to say he abolished it or it's just for the Jews. The Passover, is for, this is a biblical holiday. Understand that. So when the Passover comes, yes, <laughs> you as a believer in Jesus, a follower of Jesus, you need to observe the Passover. Very important. And the modern day Passover is not just, yeah, we understand um, the angels came for the Passover over Egypt to kill the firstborn and all that, of the Egyptians and all that, right? Yeah. But this here, okay, they, you know, what the Jews did too is they offered a lamb sacrifice, right? as well. So Jesus is that lamb sacrifice. We are right now, he is about to become the lamb sacrifice, the the final sacrifice for the Passover. So it doesn't mean the Passover is a, so the Passover is, it doesn't mean it's a, a bosh. The Passover is now about Jesus as well. And also to remember when God freed his people from the slavery of Egypt. And Jesus come to free us from the slavery of sin. So, as you can see here, he observed the Feast of the Passover. Then assembled together the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders of the people unto a palace of the high priest, who was called Caliphus, and consulted that they might take Jesus by subtle, subtly and kill him. So, there they are again, the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders, all saying, oh, what are we going to do? We need to get rid of Jesus, because he was a big threat to the Jewish religion at the time. Big threat to them, big threat to all religion. And it should be, because we should be a big threat to religion too, guys. Because we don't follow religion, we follow Jesus. So they were like, oh, we gotta, we got to uh, take this guy out. 
And I think they didn't do it all this time because they were afraid of the people rising up because Jesus reached out to so many people. The chief priests and whatnot, they were afraid of the people rising up against them. So they had to consult some way in a subtle way to kill him. In other words, without the people rising against him, you know. But they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among the people. So don't do it on the Passover. We can't do this on the Passover, right? So now Jesus, when, uh, when he was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having a blaster box of very precious ointment and poured it into his head and sat at meat. So they were having dinner, and this woman came out with this, um, this precious ointment, like it's uh, oil and whatnot, right? And poured it upon Jesus' head, right? So, but when the, his disciples saw it, they, at the indignation, saying, to what purpose is the waste? Why are you wasting that? Because this is very expensive stuff. Very precious ointment, right? Why are you wasting this, right? For this ointment may have been sold for much and given to the poor. So they're, they're saying, why would you just do that? He's going to be crucified and you just wasted all that oil. We could have sold it and gave the money to the poor. Like I said, very expensive, right? And when Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble the, the woman? For she had brought a good work upon me. So why are you troubling her? You know, like, she did a good work for me. And he said, For ye have poor always with you, but me have not always. For in that uh, she has poured the ointment of, on my body, she did it for my burial. So she knew, okay, she, she knew, what he, you know, his per he was going to the grave, like he said. I am going to the grave. And that's, you know, three days, three nights. So he, uh, she knew that and he knew that. And the, the disciples, again, like, <laughs> why are you wasting it but not knowing that's for the purpose of his burial, right? And very I uh, say unto you, wheresoever the gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman has done be told for a memorial of her. So this is like, that's, that's why this is in the Bible here. So the whole world could understand, you know, to know in memorial for her for doing this, right? Jesus put her, mentioned her and put this in the scriptures, right? So now we can say in these modern day times, because back then the gospel was barely preached throughout the Middle East, you know what I mean? So now we can say right now in the year 2022, going to 2023, right? We can honestly say right now that the gospel has been preached all through the world, fulfilling the prophecy that's mentioned in um, Matthew 24. Because he said the pro uh, gospel will be preached all through the world. This is one of the signs before it's coming. It was never like that in uh, prior centuries. The 19th century, the 20th century, uh, and the 21st century, whatever, uh, we can actually say that now. And the one of the twelve called Judas Iscariot went unto the chief priests and said unto them, What will you give me if I deliver him unto you? And they covenanted uh, with him the thirty pieces of silver. So the snake in the grass, Judas Iscariot, right? One of his uh, disciples there, went to the chief priests and said, You know, what would you give me? I'll deliver him to you. I'll betray him, right? This is a man who betrayed Jesus. For 30 pieces of silver, you got to portray the... Wow, well, this is a sick thing. It really is. But anyway, and from that time, he saw opportunity to betray him. Now the first day of the feast of the unleavened bread, and the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where the wilt thou have prepared for thee to eat the Passover? So where are you going to be prepared to eat the Passover? Right? Again, Jesus, I have to emphasize this, Jesus himself took part of the Passover. So if anybody say this is just for the Jews, yeah, you really need to read your scriptures. Jesus himself took part of the Passover. Wouldn't he have not told you that it's abolished? He says no such thing. So why are you celebrating Easter? That has nothing to do, he wasn't even crucified on you. I'm sorry, he didn't even rise on Easter. And we're going to get to that as the time comes. So he said, go into the city to such a man and say to him, the master said, my time is at hand, and I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. So they asked him, when, what are you going to do with the, for the Passover? Because we're going to keep it at the, thy house with thy disciples. 
And the disciples saw the day that Jesus appointed to them and said, they made ready the Passover. So now when uh, evening has come, this is evening, this is even, but it's, uh, evening, the night was to come, he sat down with the 12 disciples. And as he did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. He knew Judas Iscariot. I mean, this is Jesus God in the flesh we're talking about. He knew Jesus, uh, I'm sorry, Judas Iscariot was the snake in the grass there. And he says, I know one of you guys is going to betray me. And uh, they were exceedingly sorrowful and began every one of them to say unto the Lord, is it, is it I? And he said, answered to them and said, he that dipped his hand with me in the dish, that the same shall betray me. And the Son of Man goes as is written of him, but woe unto the man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been better for him that he then been born. So this is Jesus saying, like, listen, he knows who it is. He's not saying it out loud. And he's saying right out, it'd be better, for, like talk about Judas Iscariot, right? It'd be better for him as if he wasn't been born. In other words, yeah, if you take uh, Judas Iscariot as in the kingdom of God or Abraham's bosom, yeah, you got another thing coming. Man, I think that guy is sitting in a hot, fiery place in hell right now. Because he said right out, it'd be better for you if you hadn't been born. Imagine betraying our Savior for 30, even a million pieces of silver. You couldn't pay me enough to do that. You know what I mean? But this, this guy, and he has a thing that really gets me, right? Judas Iscariot, right? He's been with Jesus. He's seen the miracles he's done. All the, you know, the supernatural stuff and everything else, right? But yet, you're willing to pay, uh, sell him off for 30 pieces of silver? Wow, it just boggles my mind, really does. <laughs> and if I was around there, if I was with one of the disciples, if I knew it was him, I'd Probably knock him out. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so um, verse 25, Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it, and, to, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And this is the communion here that we all do. And he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many of the remissions of sin. So for you dispensations out there, this is not meaning that, you know, this is where it aggravates me, right? So, so for some reason, people think that the New Testament, right, automatically the Ten Commandments are abolished. Uh, we don't do the Passover or nothing like that. You know, once saved, always saved. No, that's not what Jesus is talking about. Why would he be at a Passover dinner? And he doesn't make one mention at all about it being abolished. You know what I mean? Or the Ten Commandments or anything. These people don't know what they're talking about. That's such a satanic doctrine. It's not even funny. The two people out there telling people the Ten Commandments are abolished and uh, these things are only for the Jews. Jesus himself did this, okay? He taught men to do it. But anyway, but I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. So we see this before when he did this um, communion, right? And Jesus refused to drink this wine, the fruit of the vine there, uh, this wine. And he says, I'm not going to drink it. And he told it, you know, the disciples to drink it, right? Drink it all of it. Drink all of it. Because I'm not going to drink it until the day I'm going to be sent with you in my Father's kingdom. And then when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. And then uh, said Jesus unto them, you shall be offended because of me of this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will, shall be scattered abroad. So what does that mean? He's the shepherd, and they're the sheep. So basically when he's smite, okay, when, uh, in other words, he's killed, Jesus is killed, right? His sheep, his flock is going to be scattered abroad. The, you know, the apostles all went their own way after that, right? Then he says, but after I am risen again, I will go before you in Galilee. So I want to point out one thing, right, to these uh, pre-tourism people, as we see in Matthew 24. And when they, Jesus told the apostles, right, you, shall, you will see me come again. 
to try to say all you know the prophecies happened in the 70 AD, which they did. No, they didn't see him come in the sky like that. They see him come in the spirit again after his death. And it's fulfilled it. Two different things. And that, you know what I mean? So I don't want to get too much into that part, but if you guys watch that chapter uh, 24, you know what I'm talking about. So again, he says, but after I am risen again, I will go before you in Galilee. So he said, Look, when I rise again, I'm going to come to you. Peter answered and said to him, though all men shall be offended because of thee, I, yet I will never be offended. So, which means like, uh, uh, and I don't want to say embarrassed or whatever the case, like denying sort of thing, you know what I mean? And which we're going to see Peter deny Jesus three times. I mean, as he says. But he's the first one. I'm not going to be offended of you. In other words, when people say, oh, you follow Jesus? No, no. Because they're, uh, and, and, you know, offended men something a little bit different than men today, you know. So, and Jesus said to him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. So, he's telling you before the, the cock, which is, uh, I think the rooster, you're going to hear the rooster crow. But before you hear a rooster crow, you're going to deny me three times. And Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet I will not deny thee. Likewise also said all the, all the disciples. He also said, we're not going to deny him, right? So then come Jesus with him to a place called Gethsemane and said unto the disciples, sit here while I go and pray yonder, right? And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, I hope I pronounced that right, and began to uh, be sorrowful and very heavy. So this is weighing on him right now, you know, it's like, oh man, because <laughs> he knows what's coming, you know what I mean? He knows that this major piece of prophecy is about to be fulfilled of his crucifixion, the, the sacrifice of the final lamb. This is a big thing, man. You're dying for the burdens of the entire world. So this is very soft and heavy on him. And again, these words make a little bit different what they mean today. Not that he was sorry, no. That this is, wow, whew. you know, this is what I'm about to undertake here. Then he said unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, and even unto death. Tarry he here that watch with me. So, you know what's come with me and watch with me. You know what I mean? When he goes to pray, right? Yet he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, is it, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thy will. So, did, yeah, he's about to undertake this huge burden. Magic, I couldn't even magnitude that, okay? Uh, fathom that, I'm sorry. That what's about to happen. You know what I mean? You're about to die for the sins of the world. Imagine the weight. In the spiritual realm, imagine the weight on us. So, Jesus is praying. It's like, uh, help this pass for me quick. You know what I mean? Because I couldn't even imagine that. You know, no man, mortal man, could take this burden, you know. And he comes unto his disciples, finding them sleeping, said unto Peter, What, could you have not with me for one hour? Not watch with me for one hour? In other words, could you, could you have not stayed up with me for an hour? And he says, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So the spirit is strong, he's saying the flesh is weak, which we all understand what he means by the flesh being weak, you know. So and you know, he went into again the second time and prayed, saying, Oh Father, this is cup of not I'm sorry, excuse me, guys. If this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. In other words, his uh, blood's about to be spilt, you know, for the sins of the world. And, so, and, he, and he's constantly saying, it, "Your father, uh, you father's will will be done. Not his will, but the father, will of the father." And he came and found them asleep again. <clears throat> the other apostles there, and for the eyes were heavy. In other words, they were very tired. So, and he left them and went away again and prayed for a third time, saying the same words. Then come he to the disciples and said to them, "Sleep now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand." And the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of the sinners. So he knew, okay, Jesus knew Judas Iscariot was setting him up uh, to be caught right away, you know, uh, uh, within an hour. 
So he says, rise and let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. So he knew, again, hey, uh, Judas, excuse me, Judas Iscariot okay, was coming with the high priest and all that, the soldiers to come get him, right? So while he, he spake to, to Judas, one of the twelve came with him in great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and the elders of the people. So Judas led these people to Jesus, right? And now he betrayed him, uh, gave them a sign saying, whoever shall I kiss, that is the same of he, hold him fast, right? And forthwith he came uh, to Jesus and said, hail master, and kissed him. So right before Judas got there, right? He told his apostles, look, uh, the one who's going to betray me is going to come to me and kiss me. So here comes Judas, right? Comes in the house of where they were, right? Comes right up to me. Hey, hey, Jesus. Came to Jesus. Hail, Master. He says, and kissed him. So they all knew that was um, the, who was betraying him. And Jesus said to him, Friend, wherefore thou art come? They came, then they came and laid hands on Jesus and took him. So he's asking, him, where'd you come from? And um, yeah, and that's when all these people came and like grabbed Jesus and took him into custody. So and behold, one of them which was uh, with Jesus stretched out his hand, which was Peter, because Peter had the sword, right? And drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote him with his ear. So now he has the, the apostles, right? They're ready to fight to the death, okay? Because, uh, yeah, they were ready to put their lives on the line to, so Jesus could get away, right? And Jesus said, no, 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 don't do that. And he said to him, put again thy sword into the place, for they are that take the sword shall perish with the sword. In other words, he, he has a thing, too. I know people think, oh, well, you know, uh, live, with the, live by the sword, die by the sword. And they, they discourage you from defending yourself. No, that's not what that's saying. He's telling them straight up, listen, it's like, yeah, here's the thing. And Jesus always encouraged them to carry a sword. You know what I mean? We went through the scriptures about that. And the Bible very much condones self-defense. The whole Bible is about self-defense against evil tyrants and whatnot, right? This is not what he's saying here, all right? Because I know this is a famous verse that people use, misuse, I should say, to discourage you from using self-defense and whatnot, right? If you live by the sword, die by the sword, you know? That's not what it's saying. Jesus said to him, put your sword away. For all that that take a sword shall perish with the sword. In other words, go if you attack, you know, if you start attacking these people, he knew that people would overpower him and kill him. So Jesus is saving Peter. And here's the thing about Jesus, right? Versus all the other so-called ones that came along, like Muhammad and all that. All these other people, like Muhammad, they, he put him, his own people in harm's way for him, his sake, right? And his uh, advantage, right? Jesus put his self in harm's way for us. That's one that uh, you can still, uh, no, actually one of many things we can separate Jesus from all the other people that came along, right? The so-called prophets and whatnot. They put themselves, you know, their people in harm's way, their own people in harm's way for their benefit, right? Jesus didn't do that. He stopped Peter. He's like, no, you're not going to do any such thing. Put that sword away because you're going to be killed by that sword. You know what I mean? Plain and simple, you're going to be killed by the sword because they're going to overpower you. Not only that, you know what I mean? You hear, this is part of prophecy. This needs to happen. You know what I mean? So he told, basically told his people to stand down. And he says, think that I cannot pray to my father and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. So what's going on in the context here, right? So Peter... Attempt to defend Jesus, right? Cut off one of uh, the high priest's ear and all that, right? Jesus right away told him, put that sword away because you're going to be killed. In other words, they're going to overpower him. And he goes, well, you don't think I could call upon my father's angels? I could call them uh, uh, legions of angels right now and to, um, destroy these people. Because you remember, there's a, there's a multitude of people that are there. They talk about high priests and soldiers and... All kinds of people there, okay, on people ready to take Jesus into custody, right? Which they did. And Peter's ready to give his life to defend him. And he, he's like, no, don't put that sword away because they're going to kill you. You know what I mean? Plain and simple. And he says, again, you don't think I could, uh, I can't uh, call right now, pray to my father, I mean, that he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. 
At any second, Jesus says, he could have summoned angels down to smite all those people. It, it wouldn't even have been a battle. You know what I mean? But he says, um, how then shall scriptures be fulfilled that thus must it be? So he, he knew, again, this is part of the prophecies, okay, by the prophets, that he must be sacrificed. He must be crucified for the sins of the world. So in that same hour said Jesus to the multitudes, you are come out as against a thief with the swords and staves for him to take me. I sat daily with you teaching in the temple and you laid no hold on me. Which he did. And uh, the, uh, you know, again, at the time, they were afraid to uh, lay hold on him because uh, the followers Jesus had. You know what I mean? The multitude of people that were following him. So, but all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. In other words, they just bailed out of that. Jesus told them, go. You know what I mean? Uh, because I, they probably would have took them into custody too. And they that laid hold on Jesus led him to a, cap a, cap a capitalist, okay? Sorry, guys, for the bumbling of words here. Capius and the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. So they led Jesus to the top dog here, the high priest there. And, but Peter followed him after or for a way. In other words, he followed him but kept a, a low profile, you know what I mean? And out to the high uh, priest's palace and went in and sat with the servants to see the end. So Jesus, you know, he has Peter. He's like just being all nonchalant, just going to the temple there, acting like he's not with Jesus and just, you know, as a spectator, right? And now the chief priests and the elders and the consul sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death. So they come up with some cockamamie and stuff, whatever. So, yeah, well, yep, we, we decided we're going to put you to death, right? But they had found none. They couldn't find nothing. Nothing to prosecute Jesus. He didn't do nothing wrong. But yea, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none at the last came to two false, uh, false witnesses. In other words, they couldn't find any. They had people uh, making allegations, they couldn't find nothing. And at the last came two false witnesses and said, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to uh, build it in three days. So it took these, you know, all these people that came along to try to put, uh, witness against Jesus, failed. And then these last two came along and said, well, I heard him say that he could destroy the temple and build it back in three days. And the high priest arose and said unto him, answer it though nothing. What is it with these witnesses against thee? But Jesus held his peace, he didn't say nothing. And that the high priest answered and said to him, I adjure thee by the living God that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. So, are you the Son of God? Are you the Christ? They're asking Jesus, right? And Jesus said unto them, Thou hast said, Nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power, and coming in the clouds of heaven. And the high priest rent his clothes, and they just ripped his clothes, saying, He has spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of witnesses? Behold, now he have heard of the blasphemy. So now they finally got something that they could try to... Uh, they, they, there's a proof right there. We got to um, crucify him. You know what I mean? That's what they're saying. You know what I mean? We don't need no more witnesses. We got the proof we need, uh, the, you know, the testimony we need, and that's it. You know what I mean? So because he said this. And so what you think, he, that he answered and said, he is guilty of death. Then did they spit in the face and bu buffed him, and others smote him with the palms of their hands. So they spit in his face and did all kinds of nasty stuff to him, man. Imagine that you're the son of God at any second you can call angels to whip these people out. And you're sitting there taking us abuse, right? This is just the beginning to, of horror, you know? And saying, prophecy unto us, O Christ, who is he that smote thee? So now they're mimicking him, they're mocking him, hitting him. It's like, oh, who's... The, who just hit you, Jesus? Prophecy unto us. And now Peter sat with the uh, in the place in the palace. I'm sorry. And a woman, a damsel, which is a woman, came unto him, saying, "Well, hold on. Are you the one that was with Jesus of Galilee?" So she spotted uh, Peter, and she's like, "Wait, you're the one was that was with him in Galilee, right?" 
but he denied them all, saying, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. You know what I mean? Remember Jesus says, you're going to deny me three times before the cock rose. And when he was going into the porch, another maid saw him and said uh, to them that were, were there, right, this fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. So she spotted him as one of his servants, his apostles. And again, he denied with an oath. Now he used an oath, said, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm, I don't know the man. And after a while, came down to him that stood by and said to Peter, surely thou art one of them. You know, another person came and said, well, you're one of them. You're one of his followers. And for thy speech betrayeth thee. Then the, in which he began to, he cursed and swore, saying, I don't know the man. And immediately the cock crowed. So there's, <laughs> Jesus told him, right, that's funny, not funny, but um, amazing, because Jesus told him exactly what he was going to do. You're going to deny me three times. And there's the third time right there, he denied Jesus. They even knowing him, he even swore and everything. But I swear, I ain't tell you, I don't know the man. Because he was afraid for his life, right? Then as soon as he did it the third time, one of the, uh, the roosters did a uh, you know, crow with him. And now uh, the Peter remembered the words of Jesus and said unto him, Before the cock crow, they shall deny me thrice, three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. So right away after he denied him thrice, and he, you know, when the cock crow, he ran out and just started weeping and said, Oh my God, he, just, he, he was right. I, I did betray him. Deny him, I'm sorry. So he had uh, Peter deny him. Okay, he had Judas betray him. But you know, Peter was sorrowful afterwards. He did that. I guess he was just a fear for his own life that he. You know, that's what it sounds like to me. Because if they, the thing is, when they pointed out, oh, wait a minute, that's one of Jesus' followers, right? They would have grabbed him in a second. That's why when they, you know, they got away before, when Jesus told them to go, when they come to get him to arrest him, Jesus told them to, to flee, you know, because they would have arrested all them too. But it was more prosperous for them to go out, and, you know, spread out and get the gospel out. But Peter followed them and all that stuff, and um, he just watched, right? And when he was spotted by people, that, you know, he's like, wow, that's one of them, right? And he denied him like, out of fear that they would have uh, put him to death. So interesting chapter here. And then the next chapter, of course, leads to uh, the crucifixion, you know, the prophecy being fulfilled. And uh, yeah, it's like very, you know, I can understand, you know what I mean, as a human, you know, the, especially back then, you know I mean? Uh, you imagine you're walking with uh, Jesus, right? And all the things you're seeing and all that. Well, Peter's case, yeah, right? You love Jesus and all that stuff. And, you know, granted, he shouldn't have denied him, but whatever the case, uh, he was ready to go to death so Jesus could get away. You know what I mean? It, that'd be hard to train anyone to do. If we had the power to stop Jesus from being crucified, I think our human nature would probably take over and try to do that, even though it's defying prophecy. You know what I mean? We're trying to, you know, do something like that we think is good, but it's against prophecy. So regardless, sometimes, you know, the point is too, Sometimes, according to God's will, we might not like it. Okay, we might not like it or understand it at the time, but um, then that's what I think with Peter's case at. Because remember later on, Jesus tells Peter he's the rock of his church. And no, it's not the Catholic Church. It's not a religion or any of this thought. You know what I mean? So he is the rock of the church. And uh, that's the followers of Jesus Christ. That's us. So in uh, Peter's defense, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, he was ready to go to death just to, so Jesus could try to get away, but Jesus told him to stand down, plain and simple. So if you could understand the context of this guy, is um, and again, I have to go over that one more time when Jesus told him, "When you live by the sword, die by the sword." Yeah, you know, that's not in that context of uh, that means you don't, you're not supposed to have a gun or sword. That's not what he's saying. Because he did tell people to change the cloaks and for swords. I mean, he allowed Peter to carry a sword this whole time. It was just that one instance there. So this is pretty amazing stuff, it really is. And, uh, you know, in a lot of contexts, that's why we do this study. So you can visually understand and put yourself in their shoes to see where they're at, you know. So anyway, guys, uh, thank you for joining us in our awesome chapter here. And if you missed chapters 1 through 26, we do got it in our... Um, uh, playlist here, 1 through 25, I'm sorry. So 
Yeah, it's an awesome chapter, man. Lots of context, and uh, I want you to read this for yourselves, guys. And remember, trust the plan, the only plan, and don't take anybody else's word for it. Read it for yourselves. And go, go read this chapter right now and watch the context that pours right out of it. It's amazing. It really is. And uh, please, guys, add in the comments if you find something else that you really feel like that touched you, that reached out to you, uh, put it in the comments. I'd like to hear what you think. And so, guys, uh, please subscribe to our brothers on uh, IEC TV and all the channels. The links are in the description. And join the network, nystv.org, and uh, free 30 days on me. Dan the Man is a promo code. So thank you for joining us. And uh, go to my website, truthradioshow.com, for listings of our spiritual warfare shows, our channels, and all that. we got uh, two YouTube channels, a Rumble, and other social media platforms you can find us on. So thank you for joining us in the Book of Matthew studies, a comprehensive study of chapter 26. We will see you for 27. God bless, shalom, and you are the resistance.